Hello, I'm Chris from Simul, and today I will show you how to add dynamic snow build-up to your scene using True Sky to power it. Um, we are initially using a, a Infinity Blade asset pack, which is available for free through the Unreal Marketplace, and we will also be using a snow material, which is also free on Quixel Bridge, and so everything should be available for you to try this at home and potentially build upon it as we do do things fairly simply so that you can make more complex things as time allows. So I'll run through how we set up the material. So as you can see, the scene which we're using, which is the demo map two, um, has its level set up in a blueprint and I've already applied and set up the, some of the other materials, but I'll run through how to do it with this one. So as you can see, they've got a fairly simple setup which is just an albedo and then using the red channel for their roughness and then a normal map for their normal. And I'm going to run us through making firstly the mask and then the material setup followed by setting up the displacement itself. So before we get into that, we are going to set up a material parameter collection. Fairly simple to do, right click, material textures, material parameter collection. And then we're going to set three values uh, by pressing this sort of plus here. First one being blend power, second one displacement modifier, and third one tessellation multiplier. And so we are going to create the mask initially. And to do that, we're going to use vertex normals. And initially we are going to use component mask and just use the blue value, which will be the top of the meshes, so that the snow will only get applied to the top. Uh, we are going to put in our parameter collection. When you drag it in, it will first say none. Make sure that you've got your blend power selected for this. And then we are going to use a subtract, plugging it into the B. I'm going to subtract that from 10, which will just allow things to go in the correct direction. Plug this into a power like so. Then we're going to do a quick lerp using that as the alpha, setting this to 5 so that we have a white value, and then clamp the overall between 0 and 1. So this will be used as our mask, and it'll probably be very similar to some online that you see when you look up dynamic snow, as it just applies it to the top of the material, as I said before. So nothing too groundbreaking here. Next up, we're going to add in our snow textures. I'm going to add in everything but our displacement and then drag our displacement in after. And I'm setting it up as similar as up top. So having the albedo, then the roughness, then the normal, just makes things a little bit clearer. We're going to set up a lerp for each of these. I'm going to plug our mask into the alpha channel, just so it's already set up. The snow we're going to plug into the B, like so. And then we are going to take the Infinity Blade materials and use them as they're being used before. Finally, plugging the lerps into their relevant channels. So it should look a little bit like this. Let's make it a little bit neater. There we go. Cool. As I said before, we're going to be doing something a little bit different with our displacement as we want to have a little bit of control to allow for the build-up to happen. And as you can see in our preview window, you see the snow material is now being applied to the top of the mesh, so our mask is working. But yeah, onto the displacement. To do this, we're going to use another vertex normal. And we're also going to use our parameter collection once again. So I'll copy and paste that. I'm going to make sure that we're going to put in our tessellation multiplier first. So as you can see, it's currently grayed out on our material. We're going to want to allow for our displacement to happen. So you go to the tessellation section here, flat tessellation, make sure crack free is ticked. Then I've set my max displacement to 50. doesn't really matter what value that is, but that works for the current situation. And then plug in tessellation multiplier to the tessellation multiplier node. We're going to use our collection here again. 
and we're going to multiply the displacement map for the snow with our displacement modifier from our collection. We're then going to multiply that by the vertex normal itself. And then we're going to do one final lerp and use this as our B value with a constant here of zero so that it, the mask is only getting displacement and the actual material itself gets none. So when we up our displacement, only the snow will grow, not the whole mesh. And then finally, we're going to plug our mask in as the alpha channel and plug that in to our world displacement. So it should look a little bit like this. I'm going to hit apply and then save it. And then if I look back to our level and go to our snow control, you'll see that as I increase our blend plow power, the snow increases. And then as I increase our displacement modifier, we get some displacement on our snow, which is everything set up for us to work with the blueprints. I'm now going to move on to explaining how the blueprint is set up. And so firstly, we're going to open up the level blueprint, as you can see here. And as you can see, it's nothing overly complex. Uh, we're using the event tick here. And essentially, we're going to figure out if it is snowing in the current location. We're using these nodes here. And then we're going to add to the blend power and displacement powers, setting the scale up perimeter values here. And if it is not snowing, we're going to decrease these values. So I've run through the node setup for you here. Here we're using the blueprint courtyard. This can also be a static mesh. It's essentially figuring out the location of, is it snowing here? Uh, so we're going to get the location of that. And then using the get rain at position node, which actually gathers the overall precipitation. So it gets both rain and snow values. And then we're going to use this node here to decide if it is above zero to power our true false branch. And with it being true, it will set whether or not the blend power multiplier, which we have set as a float at one currently. We're going to multiply that value by the rain power or the precipitation power, uh, which will be a value between zero and one. Then we multiply the value that comes out of that by delta seconds. And then finally, we're going to add it to the previous set of the blend power, which is set at the very end here. And so that will increase the blend power node, which will then be fed in here. So the blend power, which we gathered, is then clamped so it doesn't go too far over and just cover the entire mesh and ignore our mask, essentially. And then we set it into a set scale our parameter value, which we will set our material parameter collection that we made earlier and make sure to set the correct uh, parameter name, so blend power in this case. We do a very similar thing with our displacement power, where we use a displacement multiplier float, and again, getting the get rain at position and the delta seconds to determine the displacement power, and then the displacement power is added into that, and then once again, plugged in with a clamp so that the displacement is not, or well, does not get too out of hand when I see. Um, we also decided to add a threshold onto this so that the displacement does not start immediately. It starts once the um, blend power has reached a certain point. And in our scene, we use 7.5 with a true false branch. As you can see, it's set up here. Um, it is extremely similar for the decrease. Essentially, if it is not snowing at our position, we will minus the blend from the blend power. And once again, plug it in as we did before. And the same with the displacement power. I will show this all working for you now. So as we press play, you can probably see it best on the rocks, on the edges of meshes, such as the stairs, these railings. But it slowly builds up. And it just hit a certain point, the snow itself starts to go vertically. And then if I was to go into the sequence actor, like so, go onto our keyframe. If I 
remove the snow itself, you can see it quickly decreases. And if I turn the snow back on, it will start to slowly build up again. Again, all of these values can be changed within our blueprint. This is more of a jumping off point, and we will be supplying the blueprints by place bin in the video description. Um, we're excited to see what you all make, um, and I hope that you all have a good Christmas.